I want to thank TA Sciences for their support for this CME, excuse me, non-CME program. And uh, the booths, I believe, don't open until this afternoon, but the folks from TA Sciences will be outside at the end of this presentation if you have any questions or you want to get information about uh, obtaining the TA-65. There also are presentations about telomeres tomorrow during the regular CME program. Thank you. So we're going to talk about telomeres, telomerase. We'll look a little bit of the human epidemiology. We'll look at some of the animal models. I don't condone animal research, but nonetheless others do it, and it is actually quite fascinating. We'll look at some of the human studies, in particular with TA65 itself, and we'll talk about a few of case studies we have at our institute, talk about some uh, conclusions, and we'll have time for Q&A, and I'll remain afterwards, and I'm going to be around uh, for the duration of the conference. According to Greek mythology, the goddess Eos asked Zeus, excuse me, Zeus to grant immortality to the Trojan Tythonus, her mortal lover. But Eos had forgotten to ask for eternal youth, so Tythonus received the gift of immortality and continued to age, withering beyond recognition and begging eternally for death. Sounds like it could be some of our patients. So a problem had been noted for a number of decades that when DNA was replicated, there was a so-called end replication problem in that... I'm sorry, if, let's see, most of you are on this side, so I can use the pointer here. Does that show? I don't see it. Anyway, you can see down towards the bottom, the DNA polymerase is unable to put in the last bit of DNA replication. And so therefore, every time cells divide, a little piece of the DNA will be lost, and that is why telomeres get shorter. It's just an aberration in how nature made us and made mammals. At the same time, we're familiar with the Hayflick limit, that if you put cells in vitro, they only will reproduce uh, and will divide up to 50 doublings, and then they just stop doubling. And that is the so-called Hayflick limit, and the reason that happens, as it turns out, is telomere shortening. So over 35 years of research led to the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 2009 for the discovery of how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and the enzyme telomerase. Uh, you can see there on the left, uh, Professor Elizabeth Blackburn at UCSF, my alma mater, Dr. Carol Greider from Hopkins, and Dr. Jack Sostak from Harvard. Telomeres shorten with aging, as shown here, uh, the telomeres at the end of the... Can you see this at all? I don't see it. No? Okay. Well, you can see that over time, if we start with one daughter cell that divides into two daughter cells, the telomeres get a little bit shorter at each end, and then those two daughter cells further divide, leading to further shortening, and those daughter cells further divide, leading to... Uh, more shortening, and eventually cell division stops. Okay. All right. Thank you. And pardon my naivete. Oh, there we are. <laughs> okay. Uh, better? No? I still don't see it. Okay. Sorry, Shane. Appreciate your help. So the telomeres will divide and will get shorter, and you can see on the middle there, they get short enough, you get loss of function, DNA damage proteins are elicited, you get a DNA damage response that will lead to either apoptosis or programmed cell death, or senescence, which is a phenotype uh, that's implied by the term where the cell just basically cannot work anymore in doing its function. On the right there, uh, telomeres therefore protect DNA, they prevent DNA erosion, recombination, and fusion, which of course markedly increases the risk of cancers. And we're learning there are many other functions, including that the telomeres maintain mitochondria. So we like to think of the telomere as the aglet 
cap of a shoestring. You can see off to the right where there's no aglet left and off to the left where you have perfect aglet intact. How important are telomeres? This is Professor Elizabeth Blackburn, Nobel Laureate, 2009, quote, Telomere shortness is associated with just about all the major diseases of aging, from cardiovascular disease, death from cardiovascular disease, risks of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, diabetes risks such as insulin resistance, vascular dementia, to arthritis. The list goes on and on, and the correlation is always in the same direction. Shorter telomere length is associated with more disease. The association is absolutely solid now, because it has been found in so many cohorts that it cannot be a statistical accident. Professor Rodrigo Collado, then at the National Institutes of Health, published in the New England Journal of Medicine in an article titled Telomere Diseases, quote, telomere dysfunction seems to underlie the development of a range of human genetic, degenerative, aging diseases and cancer. The number of abstracts in this research area continues to mushroom. Just this last uh, month, if you enter telomere or telomerase onto PubMed, you get 22,000. If you enter in menopause, you only get 52,000, which has been around obviously a lot longer than our information about telomeres. So this is our San Francisco metrosexual who is shaving his legs but not his chest. And if we zoom in on his skin cells, this is thanks to... Dr. Bill Andrews, we can see the nucleus that is filled with 23 pairs of chromosomes. And at the end of each chromosome, the Greek telos, which means end, and meros uh, refers to part. So the telomere structure, if you focus on the red arrow, is a cell which then contains the chromosomes. And if you unravel all the chromosomes at the very, very end, there's a single strand of DNA that's always in the sequence TTAGGG in humans. And if you look at how this single strand of DNA appears, it comes back on itself in a so-called T-loop and is composed of the so-called shelter-in complexes that are composed of other proteins and there can be mutations in any of the DNA that makes these proteins or abnormalities of proteins that's going to lead to telomere dysfunction.